trust God. We can depend on God. We can, we can submit, as we submit and surrender to Him, He is a way making God. And, and I just thank Him for who He is and for allowing us the privilege to know Him as, as God. And that to know Him as our God. What a, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior that we, we serve. God is awesome. As always, I'm going to invite you and encourage you to come on and see Jesus with me. No matter what's going on, no matter what's happening in our lives, no matter what, is, what we're up against, what we come out of, and what we're going into, if we can learn to keep our focus on Jesus, we will make it. Yes. He'll get us through, he'll get us over, he'll find a way to point us to the other side of whatever it is, because we serve a God who is able. So, so come on and see Jesus with you this morning. If you have your Bibles or you have your devices, we're going to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. And we're going to jump in at the uh, bottom of the story of Lazarus. Verse 38. John chapter 11. Beginning in verse 38. It reads, then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there is an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God. Amen. 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 Just for a little while, I want us to consider together the thought. Life based on the word of God. Just simple, straightforward. Life based on the word of God. In, in this world, especially in the, in the area that we're, the era that we're in now, the time that we're living in now, there's so many things that suggest you should live your life based on certain bodies of information. Some say you should live based on science. You should live your life based upon uh, financial uh, matters. You should live your life based on what you know in terms of your career, your occupation, even relationships. There's, there's so many things that, that the world will suggest to us that we ought to live our lives based upon, based upon our history. What did you learn from your past? Based upon the promise of the future. What kind of inheritance do you have coming? It's, it is all about what, what should you live your, how should you live your life? What's the, what's the foundation that you stand on? What's the, the primary thing or, or body of work or information that you look at and you consider when it's time for you to make the choices and decisions in your life? And, and, and I'm suggesting here today that we ought to take our time to, to discover what the Word of God says. We ought to be able to look at God's word, to hear God's word, and that forms the foundation for what we believe and what we think and, and how we act. It's not that we ignore the other things around us, that they're just not primary anymore. It's not that we ignore finances and science, that they're just not the most important thing anymore. So yes, I, I, I pay attention to, to what the economics Oh, I pay attention to what the science is. I pay attention to what I've learned from my, my past experiences. But all of that has to pass through the filter of God's word. Because it is God's word that we stand upon. It's God's word that builds our faith. It's God's word that gives us light and understanding. So I'm suggesting here to us today that we live our lives based upon the word of God. Now that means that everything else becomes secondary at best. Everything else becomes something that just adds to or, 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 or allow us to use God's word to understand what it's saying. See, if when I look at my paycheck, I need to look at it through the filter of God's word. When I look at my relationships, I need to look at them through the filter of God's word. When I look at my, my health, my strength, my, my, my home, I need to look at all of that through the filter of God's word. If I'm not first considering what does God 
say, then I'm misunderstanding what the rest of this stuff is telling me. If I don't first understand that this is what God said, then when I look at finances, I misunderstand it. When I look at relationships, I misinterpret them because I don't first say, what is God's word of, on, on this matter or this issue? We look at the text here, and Jesus comes after waiting two days after, after he got word that his friend Lazarus was sick. He waited until Lazarus was dead. Lazarus is dead. Jesus now decides he's going to go back to, to where Lazarus is at, and then go back to where Lazarus is. And, and Jesus is on his way there, and, and Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. Martha comes running up to Jesus first, and she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And, and you know, you know the stories, so we, we, we get all of that. But now I'm dropping in here in this text, this, this part of the text, what it says is, that, that Jesus said to them, well, just roll away the stone. And Martha said, wait a minute, wait, whoa, whoa, back up. See, Martha felt that it was necessary for her to give Jesus a class on the finer points of mortuary science. She thought that she needed to inform him what's happening to the human body once it has died and starts to decay. She thought that somehow he had missed the class and told him that the body would start to decay even though he's the creator of the body, even though he's the one who brings life into the body, she thought that she needed to tell him what was going to happen. Now, we sometimes think we need to tell Jesus with a finer point of what it is to be in a relationship. We need to tell Jesus what it feels like to be lonely. We need to tell Jesus what we're up against when we don't have enough money. We need to give Jesus classes on the things that challenges us because somehow we think that he don't always get it. So she said to him, no, whoa, 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 he, he stinks by now. Don't, you don't, don't, don't go in, don't go in, don't, don't go in there. Now, the, 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 the issue is that Martha was right. The information was factual. It, it was biologically sound and accurate. The body had started to, to decay, which means the cells had started to break down. The cells started to release gases. The gases would stink. Because the body, the body is breaking down and decaying. She was biologically correct. She was right in what she was saying. She was factual in what's in her position. Jesus, he's been dead for a day. Factual. Jesus, by now he stinks. Factual. She is factually correct. But she's wrong. She's dead wrong because she allowed the facts that she knew to get in the way of what Jesus she allowed what she knew, the facts, to confuse the faith. She allowed the facts to hinder her walk with God. And sometimes we are so busy giving Jesus the facts that we don't hear what he's telling us and what he's calling us to do. Jesus, I'm broke. Yeah, he know that. Jesus, I'm lonely. Yeah, he got that. Jesus, I'm sick. Yeah, he knows. But we're so busy giving him the factual stuff that we miss. We miss that Jesus is saying something powerful to us. So Martha wasn't wrong because she got her facts confused. She wasn't wrong because she got her facts mixed up. She wasn't wrong because she left herself out. She was wrong because she trusted her facts more than she did Jesus. She messed up because she trusted what she thought she knew more than what he was telling her. That's where she, she tripped up. That's where she messed up. Because she didn't allow herself the, the privilege of trusting God beyond what she knew. Now, am I the only one here that identified with Martha? Am I the only one here that's been guilty of the same thing? You're looking at what I think I know and therefore discounting what God has shared? Looking at what I think I understand and discounting what God has promised? Looking at what in front of me and paying to what I see and what God has said, and I'm the only one that can identify with Martha that said I allow the enemy to confuse me and deceive me with facts. Yeah. He's given me true facts yeah. and led me away from God. Given me true facts and stood between me and my Savior. True facts. Yeah. Facts about my life. Facts about what I'm up against. Facts about what I'm going through. Facts about what's going on with me. That's all we have to get is he, he has something for you. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't get so bad at, at, at Martha. 
because we've been there. Yeah. And, 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 and we, and some of us, we've been there now. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard for us to trust God because we know what the bill collector said. Right. It's hard for us to, to, to trust God because we know what the doctor has said. Well. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard for us to trust him because it seems like it's denial. It seems like it's, it, it, it's going against what, what's real. And, and, and everybody's telling us that you, you need to go talk to somebody because you're in denial. No, no, I'm not in denial. I'm in faith. Because I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that it's going to work out differently than the facts suggest. I'm just saying there is a God who's able to change it if He wants to, and I choose to side with the God who can do whatever He wants to do. But, but, but here you see, Martha, Martha, it has a point because see what Jesus was asking her to do. What Jesus was asking her to. to, to to, to make it happen was 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 really kind of offensive to the culture. Right. You don't open up a tomb and let that 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 stone come out. Yeah. You don't just open up your 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 your, your, your room and let everybody see it. You, 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 you just don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't run your, your bad news up a flagpole. You don't you don't shout your your embarrassment. You see because that that was a little bit offensive to the culture. Thank you. 
like Asha. Martha, sometimes she, 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 she think faith needs to answer to every question and the removal of every uncertainty. But that's the end. Faith don't require that. Faith don't require that you answer every question. Faith don't even require that you know every question to ask. Faith doesn't require that all the uncertainties are, are dealt with and moved out of the way. See, Martha wanted to know, he said, if you don't move that stone, how are you going to deal with this thing? You see, that, that, that's not a question to obedience. See, I don't have to know what, what mama won't want to do with what she told me to go get. I just need to go get it. I don't have to know what the water boss want me to move an empty barrel from there to there. I just know that he told me to move it. You see, I don't have to know the reasons why when somebody in authority tells me to act. All I need to do is act based upon the authority that they told me. Now, I'm talking about justifying righteous authority. I ain't talking about the stuff that happened in our street where we be dogging each other. I ain't what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about when, when there's someone who, who employs you, you doing the right thing, when there's a parent who is loving you, when there's a God who's above you. Now, I ain't got to understand, ask all the reasons why and what for and how come. I just need to do what he told me to do. And he will walk me into an understanding. You see, if you look at the text, if you look at the, at the story, look, look closer and discover that. That faith, all faith is required, or all faith requires, is a submissive obedience to God's authority. You see, if I'm, sub if I'm submitted to God's authority, then I will walk by faith. If I resist and rebel against God's authority, then I will say I'm trying to get there. But if I'm submitted to God, submitted to his authority, then I will do what he asked me to do, even if it's offensive, even if it's embarrassing, even if I don't understand it, even if it's faith, I'm going to roll the stone away because I am submitted to his authority. When I go rationalizing and justifying and explaining away why I don't do what God wants me to do, then that is just a passive form of rebellion. It is not, it is not building your faith. It is just rebellion passively. That's all it is. It, it, it's a quiet protest. It's a, it's a demonstration at the dinner table. It, 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 it's not, a, it's not a, a protest that goes to the street. It's a protest that deals with bank accounts. You see, it, 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 it's a protest that people don't always see. You look holy, but you know you ain't doing what God told you to do. I, I, I pray publicly, but I know that I, I ain't living like God want me to live. You see, that's a quiet protest against the authority of God. So we have to understand that, 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 that faith, real faith, requires a submitted obedience to God's authority. And when we submit to his authority, he will walk us into life. Yeah, yeah. You see, because what, when you look at the text, what happens is, Jesus says, where have you laid him? And, 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 and they said, come and see. See, the question is, tell me where he's at. The response is, Lord, I will. Come, let me show you. See, you see the obedience? Then Jesus says, roll away the stone. Martha says, uh, no, he stands. Jesus says, well, didn't I tell you that they can believe that you don't see the glory of God? Then the Bible says the next thing they did was roll away the stone. So, so, so you got the commandment, roll away the stone, and then you got the, the, human, the human resistance, but he stands. And then you have a divine correction that equals roll away the stone. So in other words, that's a picture of our repentance Lucifer. 
and let him go. You see, that's, that's what it is when we follow him and we're doing what he, what we want him to, what he wants us to do. We're being obedient yes. to him. We're following him. Why? Because he has a part. And where do we follow him? Where do we find him? In his word. Yeah. What would they obey? His word. Yeah. They wouldn't obey his presence. Uh -huh. They wouldn't obey his word. They wouldn't obey him. Your declaration is you serve the whole body of God. Your declaration. 
declaration is that you serve a God who forgives and, and sets free. Your declaration is that you serve a God who's eternal, from everlasting, unto everlasting. Your declaration is that you serve a God who can do all things no matter what he's up against. That's your declaration. Why? Why don't we live our own declaration? Because stuff confuses the word of God. And all of this stuff clamoring for your attention to become your primary source of decision making gets in the way. And you start assessing all the facts rather than trusting the word of God. Now, now, I'm not hard on her. I'm not hard. I'm not hard on her. I'm not hard on her. I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to make her out to be somehow other than us. She would, she would fit well here in, in, in this congregation. She would, fit, she would fit well in my head. She would, she would fit well among us because we all have those kinds of, of issues going on. But she, she, she dared to go first to teach us a lesson. She dared to be, to be, be named on the pages of scripture so that we can understand that if we trust God, we don't have to go through what she went through again and what she dealt with and miss opportunities like she missed. We won't have to go through the pain to, to, to make Jesus weep. But, 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 but I'm not too hard on her, you see, because, because she, had to, she, had, she had to have like, like a, a, bunch of, a whole bunch of a stuff going through her, her mind. She, she, she had to have a whole bunch of, of, of things happening, a, a whole bunch of mixed, raw emotions and, and feelings and thoughts. She had to be a bucket of, of, of messed up emotions and passions because, because you think about it, when she looked at Jesus, what's with it? What would you have seen? Here comes, here comes Jesus is, and he's walking up. And, 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 and the first thing you want to say is you're too late. You're, you're too late. We called for you last week. I called for you before he took my car. I called you for you before he died. I called before he left. I called before it was final. I called before they locked him up. I called. Well, well. And, and, and so I'm, I'm 
guess, my guess is that Martha, she was asking that question too. She was asking that question. And then in the midst of all that, while you're dealing with that, that ain't enough, Rev. You're dealing with all of those emotions, all of, all of those questions and, and all those feelings. Then you got to deal with the emotions that's happening. She was angry. Why wasn't you here? She was happy. It's good to see you, Lord. She was disappointed. You could have kept her from dying. She was hopeful. He don't get up at the resurrection. She got all of these emotions. Father, not for me, but for him. Father, not for me. 
they really want. Bless their hearts, God. Give them what they need. See, that's how you got to trust Jesus. Because what Martha asked for, what she wanted implicitly, is not what she needed inherently. What she asked for explicitly is leave Lazarus alone and let him be dead. But what she needed to be whole and healed inherently was to see Lazarus come back to life. You see, we sometimes ask for things explicitly, but God answers our prayers based upon what we need inherently. Yes. So we'll say, God, give me money, and Jesus will break up a relationship. We'll say, God, I need a new job, and Jesus will change the way you spend money. We, you see, we'll take what we ask for explicitly. Jesus heard the cry that you need to know you were making. Listen to this. 